As we head to Barcelona, Checo is back, the FIA looks to rein in the Mercs by banning party mode, and the keys to a good race will be the heat and Alban? Let's jump the start. Hey everybody, welcome into the Jump to Start Racing podcast. My name is Wellington. I'm here with two of my closest friends. Ruben, say hello. Hello, people. Yancy, how are you doing? Hi. <laughs> <laughs> We're back uh, just to do a quick race preview for the Spanish Grand Prix. Uh, before getting into that, I just want to remind you guys, we have a very active YouTube channel. It's the uh, same, same name as our podcast, Jump to Start Racing podcast YouTube channel. We're also on Twitter and Instagram, very active there as well, at Jump the Start F1. Ruben loves the Instagram, especially the Hulk memes, the Hulkenberg memes. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> so let's just uh, dive into some of the, actually, it turned out to be a major news day. We were, we were worried about it. Uh, just being a slow day today, but yeah, I thought the dams weren't going to break. Today. Yeah, but it's Thursday. They're scheduled. They're scheduled. <laughs> <laughs> so, just to start, as as we heard this morning, Sergio Perez is back. He tested negative. No more COVID nineteen for him. Good for him. Yeah, he's back, and unfortunately, our boy, everybody's boy, Nico Hulkenberg is out. No. Yes, wow. Ruben. What do you think that this means for the team in general? No, I think uh, for the team in general, it should be what, pretty much what Yancey said. You know, that Paris is the guy for, I think it was you that said about Yancey, Paris is the guy for the seat. He knows the car. He mm -hmm. should be, you know, even though Hockenberg performed well, but, you know, it's, it's check a seat. That's it. There's nothing else. You know, he's the one that, know, that knows the car, has the knowledge of for the team to be able to back it up. Definitely Stroll doesn't have it because they were lost the first week. So thank God he's back. Yeah. Uh, Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. No, I hope he doesn't have a COVID hangover. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, man, he's the right guy. He's he leads that team. They're missing him. I think that uh, those two races at Silverstone were races where he would have shown how good that car is, if it is as good as they say it is. <laughs> um, and you can check out our uh, YouTube video on that. Um, you know, yeah, I mean, uh, unfortunately he's not, he wasn't in the car. There was one race where it was a wash basically cause they couldn't even get the car started. And, um, and then, you know, as, as good as Nico Hulkenberg performed, they had tire issues. And I think that if he was in the car, uh, since he's so good on saving his tires, he would have actually kept that place and they would have gotten a bigger points haul. So um, I'm hoping that he comes back strong and and maybe take the fight to the you know top th the top two, meaning uh, Red Bull and Mercedes. Let's not forget Ferrari is also third in the constructors right now. So you, we can say the top three. But not, I think I'm not holding my breath. <laughs> <laughs> I think that uh, Checo himself, he's just a net positive to the team in the sense that it's a driver that knows the car well knows how to make the adjustments from the practices. He could communicate well with the team. And like I said, it's a net positive, not just for him, but for both cars and, and the team. I, I guess the team, I, he saved the team. So obviously for the organization itself, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a positive. And he's been around for the development of the car as well. Exactly. Yeah. So one of the things he said, um, I guess he had this all built up and pent up aggression for when he came back. But one of the things he said is that he believes that his seat is secure and that the Vettel rumors will soon disappear. To me, I'm like, well, yeah, because either he's going to get the seat and, you know, the rumors are going to be gone or he's just not going to get the seat. And, you know, that's it. So one way or another, they're going to disappear. But he let he is leading people to believe that he is secure. Yancy, what? Do you think about his new bravado coming at, coming back? <laughs> when I read that, my eyebrows stood up. It's like that meme. <laughs> like the rock. Yeah. If you guys would see me right now, I was like, whoa. 
um, because I think it's a foregone conclusion that Vettel's already signed. Well, in our in our eyes, it's not confirmed. It's it's the rumor. It looks like it's gonna happen. Um, I wonder what happened during that time where he feels so secure that he will keep that seat. Uh, I, I don't. I I'm I don't see him keeping that seat because it looks. But then again, Vettel is underperforming, so they can be second guessing that decision. Uh, you know, Ruben, I don't know what you think because. No, I think you know. With also with what I what I read about Stroll saying that he won't be mad if he gets you know if they take a seat from him, could be a possibility that they bring back still and get rid of Stroll. Well, what everybody wants anyway. So I don't think that's gonna happen. You though, never know. Man. Like you know, maybe what I said a couple of episodes ago. But what put what, this guy like in a freaking what know, could, management role? Your dad owns the team. What could make him be so confident that he will keep the trip seat? to Mexico? Yeah, so there the, was part the trip of to Mexico. part of the trip to Mexico was that he was rumored to have been meeting up with his main I guess, in, sponsor is uh, Carlos Slim, who is he's a billionaire. He's one of the richest people in the world. At one point, what, the richest was, person. Yes. In the world, yeah. So, you know, maybe he went out there, got a couple more bucks. Uh, but that that was one of the rumors of the reason, part of the reason that he was out in Mexico. Like, hey, my 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 seat is under threat your uh branding that is on my hat on my car on my helmet you know no longer will be there do you want that to happen yeah but would they would racing point risk that especially when they know they have a good car under them that it's going to be competitive uh to to miss a chance on getting Vettel in that seat a four-time world champion somebody who can has been proven to lead a team so let me to ask promised you, land. It's a business, let me bro. ask you a question. Both it's a of you guys a question. If they don't sign Vettel right now, who's signing Vettel right now? What's the point in rushing this whole thing? Haas? <laughs> Is Vettel going to want to go Haas there? Haas can't afford Vettel. <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. They can't. <laughs> Who? <laughs> They're having a hard well, time keeping. No, no, I'm saying like, I mean, that's why I say Haas. I'm to laugh. No. <laughs> what, are the open, what are potentially the open seats? Haas and Alfa Romeo. He's not going to go to either of those teams and languish. We see Kimi do it right now. Vettel's not that guy to just sit in the back of, of the pack. Mm -hmm. So why, if I am... Lauren Stroll, why would I want to rush this whole thing? I mean, if Beto keeps up with this performance that he's been doing, he might come around cheaper. Cheaper, yeah, exactly. It's a business. Yeah, but then you run the risk of Beto being out for a year and then bring him back. But who's that going to be And he's not on? driving great right now. Who's that going to be on? If he, Why would he be out for a year? If, if I say, all right, you know, I do have a seat open. Beto, you could come on over. If I say that, Christmas what day. other seat can be open that's what I just said uh, mm -hmm. Alfa Romeo or Haas where yeah. are you gonna, is Vettel gonna go there no Rebel get the come on, <laughs> come on. you still, still on that bro who never know you never know come on <laughs> Albon's still not signed it's a tough call I mean he seemed pretty confident that he was gonna um, I'm talking about China, Paris, that yeah. he was gonna, but I mean he was riding around with all, all Marsoff now or his Ferrari uh, they said they were just going to go get uh, petrol with gas. Uh, and then, you know, that elbow bump that looked pretty friendly with uh, the elbow bump. Lawrence. With Lawrence Stroll, not Lance Lawrence Stroll. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know, man. It it just adds another wrinkle to this drama. And we're just <laughs> we're just waiting to see the conclusion. And I wonder when uh, when we will get it. Uh, it doesn't look like it's going to end anytime soon. So. Uh, to be continued. Yeah. Um, one of the other, or the other major news that came out this morning was that the FIA is banning what, I, I, I'm going to call it qualifying mode, but it is essentially turning up your, turning each team has the ability to turn up their engine essentially to the max to be able to set a good, qualifying lap party mode yes party mode quality Wah! mode that's what the mercedes had called it uh actually did mercedes call it or yeah somebody? it was lewis hamilton it yeah because so he was having a party on the track but yes. after this that was 2018 yeah after the spanish grand prix it's going to be banned no longer allowed 
Ruben, what do you think this means in terms of anything for the whole the whole grid? Listen, this is not going to affect Mercedes that much. It might affect the other teams that are doing bad, which, you know, there's a little small chance they have to soup up the engine and try to be somewhere near Mercedes, but I don't think it's going to matter much to Mercedes. To the other teams, maybe, because, you know, like I like Williams that's been in the Q2 in, you know, the last couple of races. They might not be there anymore. You don't think that it'll bring the field a little bit closer and qualify? Nah. Why not? The backfield, yeah, not the front. It'll be, it'll bring the field closer, in my opinion. It'll bring Mercedes back to the pack a little bit. I don't think that it's going to make much of a difference yeah. with the other teams. My issue, um, I, th- I think, actually, uh, let me take that back. It may make a difference with one team, and that's Racing Point. Uh, we don't know their ability to turn up or down the engine because they're a customer team. Uh, and we know that it is, even though Hulkenberg, for example, qualified third in uh, the 70th anniversary Grand Prix, we saw Lance Stroll struggle a little bit. And we don't know how much of that was the Mercedes engine just overpowering everybody else, right? Um, but beyond that, how I, I just don't understand why this is even a thing, why they should even care. Because even during the race, people, drivers, they turn up their engines to overtake, which, which is part of the, uh, the energy recovery system. They turn it down to save oil, to save battery. To I, I just don't understand. Like if it's if it's supposed to be Formula One and you design based to a formula, why are we why are we limiting things all of a sudden? Yeah, and Botas even said that um, the the effect that this could have, especially during a race, would be that um, you will see less overtakes because a lot of those a lot of the drivers deploy that extra power especially when they have a good chance to overtake but although i do agree with you yes they're you know if we're driving to a formula everybody should be able to do whatever they 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 can do within that formula however uh f1 and, and the fi is very cognizant of how this looks to a regular fan who just switches on the TV and sees just one car winning all the time. (laughs) So what I think this will do is that it will not so much during the race, but during qualifying, it will bring the pack a little bit closer together. And we all know that qualifying is important because if you qualify higher up, you're able to run higher up in the order during the race, and then you can make some overtakes. I think it'll be interesting to see how close Red Bull can get to the Mercedes now. If, if, um, if you have, uh, Verstappen qualifying in second or even a chance to take pole, if he gets out in front during the race, if he can keep that, keep that lead without having that Mercedes with so much extra power, because we all know that if you're in front, you have clean air. You can literally take off, get a three, four, five. I mean, in some cases, you have Hamilton taking 20, 30 second leads. Um, what you want to do is bring that field a little bit closer. And if you can do that going forward, subsequently in the next seasons going on, that'll be cool. You know, so everybody can, everybody can, you know. So, so you, if you qualify, that's what you're going to run in the race. So are we heading towards a spec series thing? Because in the no, answer it's that not. You have, it's not a spec series because you're still building. No, no, but I'm, I'm saying, are we, are we heading towards that way? No, it's it's not. It's, okay, it's no, not. It's not that because you're still building your own engine. No, because in India, it's, it's control. It, it's also extra power. Yeah, absolutely. But you're still building to a formula. If you have a better engine, like mm-hmm. like I like I like it's like you said. I don't think it'll affect Mercedes that much because their their engine is by far better than anybody else. With steroids, their car, you know? not just their engine, because other teams have their engine. Yeah. And they dominate the field. Yeah, but if you but if you build that engine to spec and if you're better, then you deserve to be better. But what we're trying to say is that if you if you have this extra party mode that's gonna allow you to blow out the field, there's no competition. And what do we watch F1 for? We watch it for we get so happy when there's a when there's a race where people are, are actually trying to overtake each other and have a chance to win the race. 
we get so happy, but we barely get to see that. It happened to us in this past race. There you go. And yeah, but just and but look at look at the other races that we get so like Brazil last year was crazy, but it had to be some crazy things happening. Yeah. The rain or 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 the tires blowing. Like, can we get a good race without something odd happening in the race? That's that's you know, that's the whole key. So my whole thing is that even if you take that away, you're still trying to really penalize one team. You're saying, okay, the team is so far ahead that I'm going to take this advantage away that they've built. And it's not, you know, it's, it's a, it's a team organizational thing too. So that, so then do we want to say, okay, we want to take it away because we want better racing. You know what everybody was talking about at the beginning of the season was last, last Blando turning up his engine, going crazy when he really needed the boost at the end of a race. That was very exciting. And it's something that we talked about. We still talk about it. But isn't that just energy deployment? That's energy deployment and turning up your engine just like you would in qualifying mode. Yeah. I, I don't know. So much as the, the, his, his engineers, I kept telling him on the, over the radio, mode this, mode that, do this. Right. Uh, Scenario seven. or I think if you start up higher, you have a better chance of, always. Of, of getting a better result. And we want more teams getting a better result. It is what it is. You you race to the formula. They're just building a technical director just the same way. Um, te technically, Ferrari wasn't doing anything wrong because they built around the, f the the fuel flow meter. They discovered that, and now they're down almost 100 horsepower. That's what happens. You do do you know, and 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 they're suffering the consequences for that. It's a technical directive. Let it play out. Let's see what happens. Let's have some fun and see what happens. I think it's going to be less fun, but. Okay, we I can agree so to. We will see. No, we should, we should. We have to wait so it develops to see how which way it affects or where it's going to be affect. Everything I don't, and I don't think it's going to affect so much this year. I think it's just the years going on, especially maybe they'll grandfather it into the new formula when they finally do sign the Concord Agreement whenever they want to. That's just going to happen. Okay, just a little bit. Uh, moving on, just some more of the minor stuff that came out during the week, or actually just today. Uh, turns out that Carlos Sainz, even though I want to say I dragged him a little bit last episode, turns out he had some cooling issues in the last race that caused them to open up the car a little bit, which turned into aerodynamic performance issues. More drag, I guess? More drag, mm -hmm. yes. Slowing down the car. Yancy, what do you think, why do you think it was only one car that had that? I don't even know if, if any of us could have the answer. Uh, and do you think that McLaren, who has had issues aerodynamic, not aerodynamically, cooling wise with that car in years past, do you think that they could fix it going into a race that's going to be extremely hot? Don't think so. You only have a weak turnaround. Just the same way I don't think Mercedes is going to get on top of that tire problem. They might be able to mitigate it a little bit, but I don't know. I mean, they say that they identified the issue. But you don't have a lot of time to fix that issue. Um, we'll see what happens. It's just weird. I find it weird that it was only happening to one car. Yeah. You know, so. It's and the it, hair. And it, I think and, it's the hair. And it's happening, <laughs> and it's happening to, to the car of the guy who's leaving. Exactly, dun, dun, yeah. dun. Uh, I mean, <laughs> sabotaging. he also had a, a, an incident in the pits that didn't help him either a lot. What was this? Uh, it took him longer than expected for him to be released. But when he was released, Ocon was passing by, so he had to slam on the brakes. And no, but it was also a slow pissed up on the team. There's, yeah, yeah, it was, it was a very slow pissed up. It's just a lot of tires, though. No, no, I mean, when they, when they had him up, they took a look and they expected to bring him down, meaning he should have done the pits and be in front of Ocon. Well, but when they lower him, well, you said it's just, just like a, a concoction of things that's been happening. Exactly, he doesn't yeah, seem yeah. like he's been too happy with it. No. It could be, you know, and it's, obviously it's a team sport, so if your car is overheating, then it's on the mechanics to make sure that that the car performs well. Um, you can be frustrated at that because he seems like he's on form and he can't get the most that he can out of the car. And also when you're going for a pit stop, uh, even if you're delayed, you know, half a second, you know, we know that's a long time when you can pull off a two, a two second pit stop in formula one. If, and if you guys haven't seen a pit stop in formula one, you need to watch that. It's amazing. Speaking of hot overheating, how about his freaking gear for the Spanish Grand Prix? That that I I am in love with that hat. I think I want to order it. I don't know if you guys have seen it on Instagram. It's on the McLaren Instagram page. It's the gray hat with like the orange underneath the bill. 
It's got the chile in the back. Literally a hot chile. Yeah, it's um, definitely check it out. I, I'll put a link in the show notes uh, just to make sure that you guys could see that picture. I'll put it on Instagram too, actually. Um, yeah, see, the Vettel, Sebastian Vettel had a not so nice race last week in that there was some back and forth between himself. Actually, there wasn't even back. There was just forth between himself and the Ferrari pit wall during the race. And then after the race, Matteo Bonotto, the team boss, came back at him and said, well, our strategy was out the window the moment you spun. He claims that there's no tension within the team. What do you think is the truth of the situation? I saw the press conference. Um, He seemed pretty confident that there was, you know, he seemed very believable that there was no tension. He said he didn't want to get into it because it's a distraction. Um. I do not believe him at all. (laughs) There's clearly some frustration there. uh, And you can tell over the team radio. Now, Vettel's been pretty good at, um, especially in the media, at uh, basically deflecting the truth of the matter is. But he seems pretty frustrated. Ferrari came out and said they're going to change his chassis because they found out that there was a small crack in the chassis that i knew it that explains it yeah well they put it they did what the the team explanation i think it was from simone resta uh which i think is a sporting director at ferrari was saying that the that there was a small crack in the chassis but that it didn't it, it seems like it's a small effect on his performance but we'll see what happens uh, so basically kind of still blaming Vettel for his performance, but not really. <laughs> um, so I found that very interesting the way they, they, they were, they, you know, they were their statements. I mean, but I think there is some tension there. Could be Vettel's fault. He could spin in the, the chest is not made to spin. <laughs> I mean, we, we all know that if you have something wrong aerodynamically in one of those cars, you're done. Uh, you're done. And he's, he did not look like he was very comfortable in that car all weekend in both races at Silverstone. Um, however, uh, I I tend to to side with Simone Resta in the fact that I don't think that many, uh, that a small crack in the chassis will make you perform that bad. So It won't make me perform badly at, 30 miles per hour but i wonder what it feels like at 200 miles per hour i feel like <laughs> this all has to be it's it's high performance everything so every little bit counts so i i don't know i continue to be maybe i'm just a jerk that continues to sympathize with vettel when i shouldn't but who knows yeah we understand you got a good heart <laughs> listen <laughs> man I've heard that. this is uh this is formula one it's cutthroat business you got to perform or you're out Especially the Ferrari. Exactly. Yeah, I, you know better than anybody. Rubens Barrichello. Over <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, no, it's that's how it is. So then um we're back to General Hospital as the days as the days turn or as what is that, as the world turns, I don't know. Racing point, protest and appeal. Teams are dropping out, teams are going in. I'm it's to the point where I'm almost not even sure as to what exactly is going on here. Um, we know that, excuse me, we know that Williams, McLaren, Renault, and Ferrari were the teams that now are against Racing Point as far as their, uh, brake duct issue. Ruben, any, any further developments? No, I think McLaren backed out, no? McLaren backed out. Yeah, that's about it. There's nothing, we should just waiting. It's a waiting game now compared to what, you know. This is, uh. This is one of those things where you just want to fast forward to the end. See exactly. Because <laughs> it's so confusing. It's like one minute you're, you're speaking out and you're hitting out. And then uh, Lance Stroll comes out and does this, basically takes his bully pulpit and feels offended. Lawrence Stroll. Uh, well, yeah. Was yeah. It? Yeah, yeah, Lawrence yeah, Stroll. Lawrence Stroll. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you confused me, bro. I'm sorry. Confused that was all my fault. Lawrence Stroll. Larry. 
Larry, Lauren, Larry Straw. Larry the Cable Guy <laughs> Straw. Lauren Straw in that video looked like a dictator. Dude, he comes out and just blasts everyone. That's what he looked like. He looked like a dictator. Yeah. Like, How country. dare you question my <laughs> authority? <laughs> the dictator. My God. Yo, is it me or does he look like uh, Mr. Incredible from The Incredibles? Like, like, <laughs> <Yo>. <laughs> wow. Hell yeah. Yo, every time I see him, I'm like, yo, this is Jeez, funny. He has an age. Well, sure has a lot of money, though. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah, but uh, you know, I don't know. And and what what's crazy about this is that we just don't know why these teams drop out. Really, we don't. We just don't know the inner workings because we just won't find out. But I guess we will find out through the appeals process, and we'll see what happens. But I mean, in in the meantime, they're still gonna get reprimanded for their illegal breaks. Still, yeah. So we'll see. So stupid, guys. Is there anything else to talk about with regards to the last? last race i feel like we pretty much hit it uh with the last episode and anything uh, we're gonna have more tire issues yes sir yeah, yeah we will come to that right now yes. actually so track re- race preview track preview barcelona is the track that Bar- i'm sorry circuit de barcelona catalonia yes right? sir i gotta say it properly doesn't anyone how do you say that again well say it in Spanish. i'm sorry I, I gotta say it correctly El Cirquito de Barcelona, Catalunya. Barcelona. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, he even put the Z in there. You saw it, right? <laughs> you guys didn't realize that I'm so cultured. <laughs> but here I am. So the uh, this track is where it's known for being the track that the teams go to do all of their preseason testing. So all of the drivers are very familiar with the track itself. So the reason it's chosen as a track to do all the testing is that it has a little bit of everything. It's got, you know, just the different types of turns, different turns, different tri- type of track conditions. Uh, what it's also known for is that it is not good on tires, meaning it's a very abrasive track. Knowing where we came from, Silverstone, that they had issues in both races, all teams, not just Mercedes. Um, what do you think? Yancy, what do you think that we're going to be seeing here on a hot day in Barcelona on a very abrasive track? Praise the Lord that it's hot. <laughs> the preacher, yes, he came out. <laughs> that it will be hot in Barcelona because it will make this race more interesting than it usually is. I do not like this track because it gives us very boring races historically. Oh, so, but it is an abrasive track and they, I think they repaved it a few years back, but even if they do, it's still abrasive. You have new tarmac, which heats up the tires even more. So I think it was, this was one of the tracks, I believe last season where they brought a thinner tread of tire than the norm because they were afraid that the tires would be eaten up too quick. Oh my God. Because it would, they would heat up too much. So it's going to be super hot. Track temperature, they say, is going to be 40 degrees Celsius, which is about 104 degrees Fahrenheit. So we are going to have tire issues, ladies and gentlemen. And we, the last time we had tire issues was in Silverstone for the 70th anniversary Grand Prix. Well, I mean, the week before that, too. Well, yeah. But it became a strategy issue last week. So... I think we're going to get a good race. We will get an awesome race this weekend. And we shall see, you know, if Mercedes made the right changes over a couple of days. I doubt they make the right one. They, they might find some corrections to it, but it's going to be very interesting. That's, that's why I'm excited, because <laughs> if they have their normal two weeks between races, then you know Mercedes is that good. They are going to find a way to mitigate those issues it's like that question right who who would win in a fight and it's like batman with two weeks prep time batman's always gonna win <laughs> exactly right exactly but if you catch him by surprise <laughs> so i f- here's what i'm gonna say right because the because they got caught off balance last week by red bull they're gonna compensate they're gonna go i will say that they will go on on a harder compound and I hesitate to say that it'll be the hard, but it'll be a harder compound, meaning the medium or the hard. They're going to make up that difference to get through, obviously, Q2 uh, because of their party mode. It's the last time they could use it. 
Let's just wall out. Let's go crazy. Let's burn the engine out. So yes, then sir. the question becomes, Ruben, do you think that as do, do you think that we start seeing a counter to the counter? Like will Red Bull then go on softs to start and then do some funky stuff in the middle? How do you how do you see that this will play out? Am I overthinking it? Yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your analysis. <laughs> I mean, uh, I think because of what this past last couple of races have shown regarding the degradation and stuff like that, people are going to go now into the harder compound and try to do it. I believe two weeks ago we did mention like, hey, you know, why are they trying to qualify in the meetings to get through whatever? But obviously it's because they want the meetings to last longer, like to start on the meetings. But because of the risk of the pack also, the times being so close, they won't. You know, they won't push it as much. I know it's gonna be weird. Like Red Bull won't take that chance because Red Bull needs wants to be on top. Mercedes, you know, it's Mercedes, they got the party mode, but I don't know. It's, it's, a, it's a trick, it's a trick thing to to go deep in, you know, dive in dive into it because it's you're damn if you do and if you're damn if you don't. Like, you know, if you do it and it works, oh my god, that did so well. But if they if it sucks, they're like, why they do that? Yeah. But qualifying is gonna be very important. Of course. Qualifying here is going to be very important because this is not a track that's I think it's going to start from practice. Yeah, well, I'm, what I'm saying is that it's going to be important because it's not, it's like, um, I mean, and I don't want to compare this to Monaco, but uh, I just want to, two parallels, meaning when you qualify in Monaco, because we know that we're not going to get a lot of overtaking in Monaco. You win. Qualifying is super important because usually you hold your place. So here in Barcelona, qualifying will be very important because you're not going to get a lot of overtaking depending most of the overtaking is going to take a going to be you know first lap second lap uh when the cards are closely matched when, together when better spins yeah <laughs> thank you they're changing that. the chassis come on guys <laughs> yeah yeah you yeah you keep you keep holding hope I there I can't buddy. believe that I'm here that I'm supporting that all like this yeah. is crazy to me <laughs> yeah. thank you for becoming a ferrari fan um so qualifying is going to be super important um and what you start on is going to be super important because you don't you want to go for a longer stint obviously on the first on, uh, you know for your first stint because you know that your tires are going to get eaten up fairly quickly because it's going to be hot so you want to make sure that you're on a good tire beginning of the race so you're not doing a multiple stop race you want to do like a one stop right i think that could be pulled off here because the, the tires are harder. They're not as soft as mm-hmm. uh, in the last three. Seventy for anniversary. So and um, if Red Bull, if both Red Bulls, because here's the here's the issue with the Red Bulls. The Red Bulls are not qualifying close to each other, so they can't take it to Mercedes. So it's usually Max versus Max the Lone Ranger. Yeah, Max the Lone Ranger. You know, battling to Mercedes. And if you don't have another Red Bull threatening one of the other Mercedes, then they can attack them and then they take that one too. So if the Red Bulls, which are very good in hot conditions, as we can see, because they won the last race, can qualify up there with the Mercedes, then we are in for an interesting race. Pretty much we need Albon to have a good weekend too. Yes. And so, you know, along those lines, I was just thinking that if you look at the map of Barcelona, right, the, the problem is... Hold on. When you mentioned the map, it just a thought came to my mind. Why didn't you do the thing you, you say with the track? The track looks oh, like this. You didn't do actually, it this time. You're right. So let's I'm sorry. Go back to your thought. Let, we'll let, do it let me let me backtrack. <laughs> the this map, Barcelona. <laughs> it looks like uh like a cat uh with its tail curled up behind it. If if you guys uh, I should put put a video or a, I should put a picture in the show notes. I'm looking at a picture of the track right it now. It looks like a cat, right? That's not the picture that I was seeing. What what do you see? I thought it was like maybe like a crab, you know, how it has one oh, claw on. bigger and one claw smaller, you know, just the, the top the top part of that the, I see. of the crab. You know, because they normally have one a bigger claw than the other one. You so. guys eat some messed up crabs, man. <laughs> <laughs> yes. but, what do you see a cat on, there? The, the head on, on the right side and the tail on the left. Curled up. Anyway. But you, you I, meant- I, well, I can't talk. I can't see any. I just see a weird looking track. But go ahead. <laughs> so in the in this cat in the tail portion of the cat, we where's the seen, tail on the left or the on right? The left. Turn turn three four five. Okay. So we have seen Alexander Albon 
with he has not uh, he he's done a lot of over actually Alexander Alban and Charles Leclerc they've they've done a lot of overtaking this year in within turns like within um going into long uh long and uh turns that open up sweeping turns yes so turns 3 and 4 lend themselves to that this this year or in this track it, also if you look at turn 9 it's the same type of deal i think that you're going to be seeing a good race from alexander alban and a good race from charles leclerc based on the on that you won't get a lot of overtakes on the straight because of the way the track is set up in that there's a chicane right before the straight which has an effect of slowing the cars down so oh, sucks. yeah i know it's, it's just it's a messed up design but <laughs> we talk about Alex Alban. I think that this is going to be his best race of the year. Uh, I'm not. I'm not willing to put money on it. Are you but predicted I, it? I I see put him some money on it. No, I see him as fourth and threatening for a podium. So pretty much, he'll be your driver for best of the rest. He was my driver for best. Su- sucks that he's best of the rest because he's part of the team, the one of the team. teams that's mm-hmm. up best. But yeah, that's that's what I am predicting for this this race. Um, we should also see a lot of good racecraft being rewarded. So I believe that you will see uh, Daniel Ricardo also doing really well in this in this track. If I, it doesn't spin, I agree with you. Do know? Do you know that Ricardo actually said that he did a Vettel spin? No, he didn't. He did. He said that. Oh my god! That was that was not crazy. a thief. No, no, he said that he he said I did a Vettel spin. Oh my god! So Vettel spins so much that. It's known as a Vettel spin now. <laughs> so, all right. What do you guys have as far as predictions? You go, Yancy. Who, me? Yeah, you go first. You know that I'm going to be right again, right? I hope so. Let's see it. Okay. That's why I want your predictions first to see if it broadened my horizons. <laughs> it's going to be the same top It's like three. that guy, like, yo, what's your answer so I could take it? It's gonna be <laughs> Stop cheating off me. My bad. <laughs> um Hamilton's gonna win this race. He's so dominant in this track. Um and Mercedes just go well. This is a Mercedes track. Uh even if they do have their tire issues, I don't see why they wouldn't be able to mitigate it, especially if they're gonna be using the same compounds uh that they use at the British Grand Prix. They're using the same tire compounds. This track doesn't, it's very abrasive, but it doesn't put the same amount of G forces um, that you get through the tires uh, where you get the stretching and pulling of the rubber. So I I think Mercedes is going to pull this out. I think Max will be up there. I think it'll be a very close race between Max and Hamilton. Um, And I think it'll be a tough, if Auburn, can put a good race together. He can probably ch- challenge Botas for the for the final spot on the podium, but I don't see that. I say Botas gets third place. Uh, so before you go, it's been a Mercedes one two the last two years. Hamilton has won three yep. years in a row. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Vettel won in uh, Vettel won second place. I shouldn't say that. Vettel was in second place one in twenty seventeen. And Daniel Ricciardo was in third in 2017. 2017 was also the year with the crying Ferrari kid where uh, Kimi yes. was out right at the beginning uh, with a suspension failure. Yes. That yes. was a nice thing. That uh, the kid was crying? No. That they, uh, or everything that F1 did. You know, they got the kid from over there, met Kimi, all of that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think maybe both us takes it this time. Ooh. Yeah. What makes you say that? Oh, uh, He got pulled last race. I mean, he got pulled. Um, last race? Yeah. No, he got pulled position. 2019. 2019. 2019. Hmm. So he likes this track. And whenever he gets pulled, he don't. If like, Mercedes doesn't mess up his strategy. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Like we said last time, I think it was just the data changed during the race. I think both of my takes. Yeah. The data changed. They saw that the tire wasn't going as bad as it, that it, uh, that is, as it looked. Yeah. I think it would be both us, Ham, Verstappen. And then I'll So they're going to do the one, two? Yeah. So here's what I'm going to tell you, right? Bodas was on... Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no. no. Bodas was on pole last year mm-hmm. by almost six-tenths of a second, right? 
which is astronomical. Yep. Boras was second place to Lewis Hamilton's pole position in 2018 by four hundredths of a second. He, this is a track that he does well in qualifying wise. So we shall see how that plays out. I feel like Boras has done pretty well in terms of qualifying this year. So I expect him to push. I think Botas has been racing really well this entire season. He's had bad luck. He's had really bad luck. I think just and he's Ham not and obviously he he doesn't get the benefit of the doubt obviously because he is even though they don't say it he is the number two driver on that team. Obviously he's not the world champion. Um, that's interesting that you think Botas will win. I don't think so. I don't see it, but. We'll see. Also because of what happened last weekend to him. You know, they messed up the strategy with him, supposedly, and all that stuff. Who's they'll probably, gonna they'll probably who, make it up to him? Besides the top three, who you think is gonna be the standout performer here? I think it's Albon. This, this is, is uh it's a tussle between Albon and Leclerc. This is a track that I do agree with what Wells said with the turn. I'm sorry, Wells. I do agree with what Wells said with all those turns that they're, they're that's what they've done so far this whole year. So the both both of them have done. Yeah. And we missed that from Danny Rick, because Danny Rick is the overtaker king, you know. Well, uh the, I mean, this is not a... Renault usually does well on fast tracks. That's, I mean, th- that's why they went well. In, in the Silverstone, Silver, in they went Silverstone, well. Silverstone, they went well. I don't see them going too well here. So I don't I don't see Renault... You know, they'll probably be in the points, but they're not going to be, you know, battling for best of the rest. I really think that it's going to be Albon. This was last year. Um, we all know, you know, gone but not forgotten. Pierre Gasly on that number two Red Bull car. This was one of the races that he actually did really well with. He he ended up in sixth place. But remember, at the time, Mercedes was Mercedes, and Ferrari had the super Ferrari. It was that uh, really, really fast. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The engine of steroids? Yes, exactly. So he... It sounds messed up, but he yes. was, at the, end of the, at the end of the race, he was 19 seconds down from... Hamilton, who won the race. That's not bad. That's not bad. For no, Pierre no, Gasly. Right. So I'm I'm really hopeful here for Alex Albon. If I'm wrong, I, I can't no, wait I to, think, to I take think, a bunch of crap from you guys. But I think what was Albon is missing is just having a good, complete weekend. Always something's happening to this kid. He had one last weekend. No. Nope. What? Last weekend. Albon's race weekend. What about it? He had a decent weekend. He did absolutely. Yeah. He 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 moved up the he moved up the grid like a champ, like he always does. He always has good r- race days. He doesn't do too good in qualifying. If he can't get his Saturday together, then he's in for a tough race. Because I said this track is not easy to overtake. Um, he'll move up the field just because he's in a fast car. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But once he gets up to those, you know, you know, top five. It'll be harder to overtake. Um, he just needs to get his Saturdays together. I think that's the only thing that's missing. I think his racecraft is great. He's not afraid to overtake, which was a problem with Gasly last season, that you would see Gasly get stuck behind the car when he clearly had the better car. Um, so should we tell Gasly this weekend to send it? Listen, he's been sending it all season, <laughs> yeah, bro. Man. And uh, and he's been uh, th- that car is not bad either, Alpha Tori. So watch out; they'll they'll probably be in the points. Uh, um, it's either going to be them or McLaren. McLaren doesn't seem like they're going to go too well this weekend. Um, but yeah, I, I think uh, back to Albon. He needs to put in the qualifying session of his life. Yeah, he qualified ninth. He started ninth last week and he finished fifth. Yeah. So if he so imagine if he would have fin- he would have qualified higher. Right. And to stay Ooh. out, stay out of traffic, be in clear air. Exactly. Because that's the key. You got to especially with these cars, you got to be in clear air in order for you to make a move. If you're stuck in traffic, as we've seen with the Vettel and other cars, if you're stuck in traffic, you're going to burn your tires up. You're going to overheat the car, especially it's hot. You're not going to be able to move as fast. So you need to be in clear air. That's super important. It's going to be an interesting weekend. Because it's going to be hot. Yes. I wish I was there. Can you imagine like the Barcelona, like the beach? Wow. Visiting Las Ramblas, having a little sangria. Oh, my God. 
Why torture yourself? Oh, can't even leave the country. Can't even leave the country. Jeez. Anyway, <laughs> that about wraps it up for us. Guys, I want to remind you, we're on YouTube, Jump to Start Racing podcast. Very active on that, putting out videos every day. Today, actually, were two videos at Jump to Start F1 for Twitter and Instagram. Very active there as well. A lot of fan engagement. Um, follow us on all or whatever your podcast uh, podcast platform of choice. Spotify, uh, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, TuneIn, iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts, etc. How do you remember all that? Exactly. I was going to say, whichever you like, we're there. I count on my fingers and my toes. <laughs> <laughs> if you see his hands, it's full of markings. Yeah. <laughs> Hieroglyphics on the hands. <laughs> uh, Ruben, anything else before we head out? No, I mean... We should wait for this weekend. Yancy? It's race week, baby. Let's yes. do it. That's right. As Ruben left off last time, vamos. Yes. yes. <laughs> Bye, guys. See you later.